My name is Erin from Fabricate. Today I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the printhead PCB board on your Ultimaker 3 and Ultimaker 3 Extended. Before we begin, you'll want to go ahead and unplug your printer and get your 2mm hex head screwdriver ready. Now, we're going to go ahead and start with removing the printhead from the machine. So if you've already done this, go ahead and skip ahead to about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. We're going to remove the printhead from the printer. Now to start, you're going to need to unscrew the two screws at the rear of the printhead. So go ahead and set these aside. Next, we're going to remove the clamp clips from underneath the collets. Just slide them forward. Be careful not to drop them. <laughs> now, apply downward pressure to the collet and pull up on the Bowden tube. Do the same thing to the other Bowden tube. Downward pressure and up. Next, we'll go ahead and take the screwdriver and stick it in the hole at the back of the printhead. This will let you remove that cover. Now, if your printhead looks like this, with no tabs between the two halves of the cover and a taller part on the upward bit, then you're going to need to go ahead and pull it off vertically going up rather than sliding it back. All right, I've moved the print head to the side to make this a little easier to see. So we're going to fold back the cable a bit and you see that small white rectangular piece? You're going to get your screwdriver underneath it and apply pressure to the side to help it release the clamp because that clip is what's holding it in place. There you go. Next, we have to remove the printhead shafts. I like to start with the Y shaft. Tilt the rear sliding block forward so that you can release the Y shaft. Do the same thing with the front sliding block and pull the whole printhead shaft forward out through the front of the printer. Next, you're going to do the same process on the left and right sliding blocks. Go ahead and turn the printhead slightly diagonal to pull it off. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the printhead PCB from the printhead. First, we want to go ahead and remove these four screws. They hold the side bra fan bracket parts together. Okay, now we're going to slowly open up the printhead. Now to make it a little easier, I recommend opening the front bracket so that your magnets don't attach onto those front screws. With the print head eased open a little bit, go ahead and grab each side of the side fan bracket and spread it. This will help you get the metal front bracket out of the pegs that hold it to the side fan bracket. Now flip the whole thing over. We're going to carefully start unplugging the cables. On the left is the side fan, followed by the capacitive sensor cable which is red and white. Next, the front fan cable, which is white and black. And last, your other side fan cable. All right, we can go ahead and set the two side fans off to the side for now. We won't be needing them. You can also set the side fan bracket aside, as well as the front bracket. Now, there's one more screw here on the back of the print head. We're going to go ahead and unscrew that. All right, this is the screw that holds the print head PCB board in place. Next, we're going to take apart those two front screws on the print head. Now, I recommend holding down the top cover with your thumb to keep the lifting switch pieces from flying everywhere when you take it apart. The lifting switch pieces are under pressure because of the lifting switch spring. So, remove these two screws. Now we're going to carefully turn the print head over and you want to separate it just above the lifting switch. All right. So now you can go ahead and lift out the Y bearing and your print head PCB. You're all set to go ahead and replace it. Now we're all set to go ahead and install the new print head PCB board. Here's your new PCB, the metal contacts for the print cores, 
and the connectors for the cables. We're going to go ahead and slide that back into place with your Y bearing coming through it. There's no front or back to the Y bearing. And slide that on through and set the PCB board into the print head housing. There's a little tab at the bottom for it to fit in, so you should be able to feel when it's properly seated. Now, I like to press a finger against the PCB board while I screw in the little screw that holds it in place because that should help keep it stable. Now, it's important not to put too much pressure on this screw. You know, it should be very firmly settled, but don't over tighten it or you could break it off at the PCB. Now we're going to take a look at the lifting switch parts. Next, we're going to pull all the lifting switch parts out of the two halves of the print head. So we'll set these out. Sometimes it's just easier to turn the print head over and drop them. So here, we have the middle piece of the bearing housing and your filament guide insert. Pop that through there. And then press the top piece on to hold it in place. Flip the whole thing upside down. Next, take your print head spring and put that over the filament guide insert. Next is the lifting switch ring. Now you'll notice that on one side it's very smooth and round. On the other side it has little pieces like mountains or like a jigsaw puzzle. That's the piece that you want to see because this is going to help hold the lifting switch in place. Now there are actual little cutouts on the print head bearing housing which will help you find the right place for it. So you can see it's got a little bit of tension, so it's not going down very far. Then take your lifting switch, put that right over it. It'll fit into place. You'll have the lever towards the back when you're holding it this way. Now you've got your last piece, which is kind of C-shaped. It's got the jigsaw on one side and a plus sign on the other. You want the plus sign on top. And it's got a little bit of a handle on the end, so you can hold on to it. Now we're going to turn the other half of the print head upside down, press the two halves together, trying not to lose all those lifting switch pieces. All right, seems to have fit together nicely. Now we can go ahead and reinsert the screws. Again, I would go ahead and hold the top down so that none of your lifting switch pieces come apart. Let's pick up your front bracket and side bracket, and we're going to go ahead and put one of the holes through one of the pegs on the side fan bracket, stretch the bracket open so that we can get the other hole through. All right, once it's through, you can see that it moves on its hinge very nicely, and you want the capacitive sensor wire and fan cable wire where they won't get into any trouble. Now slide your radial fan in. You want the extra length of wire looped behind it. The other one as well. Now make sure that the label is towards the side where you can't see it and the opening is towards the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and put the two halves of the front head together, making sure not to pinch any of the wires. Just about the worst thing you could do at this point is going to be to pinch a wire and have to take everything apart again. So make sure to hold, hold them where they can get through cleanly and not get in the way of anything. Again, it helps to have your bracket open so that the fan isn't trying to interfere with the print head screws in the front. The red and white capacitive sensor cable goes second from the left, looking at the back of the print head. The white and black front fan cable goes in the third spot from the left. Then your two side fans go on the ends. Now, when you go to seat the two halves together, it's really important to make sure that you don't pinch any of the wires. 
I know I said it before, but always worth saying again. So just make sure that you've got everything running through all the grooves and all the places where they're meant for the wires to go. Now we just have to go ahead and put the four little screws back in. And there you have it. You've reassembled your print head. So make sure the bracket closes good and you're ready to install it back in the printer. We're going to go ahead and install the print head back in the printer now. So you want the longer of your two print head shafts. This will be the X shaft. You're going to go ahead and put that straight through the print head. Okay. Turn it a little bit diagonally so that you can go ahead and get the print head shaft in there between the belts and rest it on top of your sliding blocks on the left and right. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure that the print head shaft is far enough to the left otherwise it won't trigger the end stop. I like to use about a finger's nails width between the left side of the print head shaft and the wall. It's important to make sure the sliding block and print head shaft are perpendicular. If it's tilted, it will cause problems later. Now do the one on the left. The print head shaft should always make a satisfying click when seating into the sliding block. Now we'll slide your Y shaft in the front panel between the two halves of the belt, skewer it through the print head, and seat it in the sliding blocks. For the rear block, you want to make sure that the print head shaft rear is aligned with the back of the block. If you put it too far back, it'll crash into the Z shafts. Click it in place. Now go ahead, click the front in place. Again, make sure the shafts are perpendicular with the blocks. A tilted block will come loose later. Now reinsert your Bowden tubes. Take your clamp clips. We're going to go ahead and slide those underneath the collet. If you ever lose your clamp clips, it's very easy to print more. There they go. All right now we'll go ahead and reseat the print head cable. So, in general, you should be able to go ahead and just press it back down into place. If you're not sure that it quite clicked back into place, you can always take your screwdriver and apply a little pressure to each side of the large plastic connector and make sure that it's seated. It should click into place. Take the little cover, make sure to feed the tabs underneath. That should slide right back into place. Now again, if your print head looks like this, instead of coming across, you're going to want to slide it down from the top until it fits. Now all we need to do is go ahead and screw the print head screws back in. And there you go.